I see it. Hello, my name is Dylan and I am a home brewer. I've gotten a few requests from friends and family to do some YouTube videos to document my brewing, so that's why I'm here. I'm changing my brewing setup pretty significantly right now, so I thought this was as good a time as any to start. I am a novice home brewer. I've really only ever done extract brewing and brew in a bag, so take everything that I say with a grain of salt because I am by no means an expert. And I think above all else, you should just do your own research and experimentation and figure out what works best for you because it's gonna be different for every person. So I thought just to start off with, I would go through my old setup and some of the things that I wanted to change about it. So I was doing brew in a bag with this eight and a half gallon kettle and this bag. And so I would just get the water up to temperature, throw this bag in, throw the grains in, do the mash there, take the bag out, and then just do the boil uh, with this kettle. Brew in a bag is convenient in a lot of ways, and I really liked it for a while. Uh, it's great because you just use the one vessel and you don't have to keep transferring your wort, and the cleanup is a lot easier just because it's one kettle for the entire process. Brewing in a bag worked totally fine for me. I made some really great beers with it, but there are a couple of things that were just very inconvenient and inconsistent about it. I was getting really inconsistent mash efficiencies because it's really hard to maintain your temperature when you're brewing in a bag. You can't really keep that direct heat on the pot or else you run the risk of scorching your bag. And the kettle really isn't designed to hold temperature without adding extra heat. It's also really weird to sparge when you're brewing in a bag because you have to just hold the bag over the kettle and let it drain out. And then it's really hard by myself to hold open the bag and pour hot water over it to rinse out the rest of the sugars. It can also get pretty messy when you're handling that bag that's dripping all of your wort, uh, just moving it all around the kitchen, dripping your wort everywhere. I was also doing my brew in a bag uh, just in my kitchen on my electric stovetop, which worked pretty well for small one gallon batches. But once you move to five gallons, having to do a full volume mash and then full volume boil, uh, it really takes a long time to get that up to heat enough to just boil five gallons of wort. I think most people move pretty quickly from their kitchen stove to an outdoor propane burner. And propane is great because you can add just a ton of heat, get very fast boils, and make your brew day go so much faster. Moving to an outdoor propane burner would also allow me to keep using my kettle, which would be great because it would be a cheaper upfront cost. The downside is that this propane burner requires a pretty flat outdoor area, and I also live in the Seattle area, so I would want it to be covered and that would allow me to brew on rainy days. Unfortunately, I actually don't really have easy access to any area that fits all of those requirements, so brewing on a propane burner is kind of out for me. I also did a little bit of research on whether you could use a standalone hot plate for brewing indoors, and unfortunately it seems like all of the hot plates that would put out enough power to boil five gallons of wort are either induction, which doesn't work with the kettle that I have, or require a 240 volt connection, which I also don't really have access to. While I was researching the hot plate situation, I came upon the world of electric brewing, which takes place in a kettle that has an electric heating element in it, and a lot of these systems also come uh, all in one with sort of a modified brew in a bag. So instead of a bag, you have this stainless steel pipe with a mesh bottom that allows the wort to all drain out of the grains that you have in there. And this mash pipe even has these convenient little feet that sit on a lip in the kettle that allow you to just leave it there and let it drain instead of having to hold it the entire time. Another upside of electric brewing is that I can brew it right in my basement, which is where I ferment, so I don't have to keep lugging a five gallon carboy full of wort up and down stairs. Unfortunately, I couldn't continue using my old kettle, but you can get some of these electric brewing setups pretty cheap. This one that I ended up getting was only about 240 bucks. 
I also briefly looked into getting a 17 gallon electric brewing setup, but those also require 240 volt connections, which again, I don't have access to. So the setup that I ended up landing on and getting was this Digiboil with the Digimash setup. I ended up going with the version without the pump because it was $100 cheaper and I wasn't 100% sure that I needed it. And if I decide that I do need it, I can just get another pump at a later date. To wrap up this video, I wanna do a quick test of this Digiboil setup just to see how quickly I can get water from the tap up to mash temp and then again from mash temp up to a boil. So let's try that. All right, it looks like we're right at about six gallons. So let's get this system turned on and the heating elements on. And let's see how fast this thing will get to about 156 for our mash. So we are at 154 degrees on this at almost exactly one hour, which is fine. I had sort of a learning experience during this. Uh, I tried to turn on my heater in the basement at the same time as this kettle and tripped a breaker. So now I know not to do that in the future. Uh, so now let's go from mash temp up to boil. And I'm just gonna see how high, eh, 248 will be plenty for a boil, huh? All right, let's start another timer and see how this one goes. Okay, so we are rapidly approaching a boil at just over half an hour since starting the heat from the mash. And that is significantly better than I was getting with my old setup on my stove. So I'm happy with it. I'm super excited for my first brew day on this system, which should be in just a few days. I wanna make a start to finish video for a New England IPA recipe that I've been iterating on with my brew in a bag setup. So that should take a couple of weeks from start to finish. Do a thumbs up, subscribe so you don't miss the next video, all that stuff. All right, bye.